I'm ready, I'm ready. To Hawkins, Pig Pen, Bay. You suck. You suck, Tarka. <laughs> Pat on my ass, y'all just playing the ass posing, frontin' no bussin' or dirty cock gun button. At least more's right, rich, trying to do something. Penners, my weapon, fences up and turbans, no bluffing. Don't get it twisted, sort of more get handcuffing. Judges dismiss cases, prosecutors cussing. Telling my guys recuse themselves or get sued. Civil right leaders are conscious blacks marching on news. Stopping traffic of people that didn't kill their sons and daughters. In Canaan land, we call your brighton out of order. Nationality has me awake like a sleep disorder. While most wear blinders, my peripherals. Broader. For the record, I'd sweat in nervous court recorders In Admiralty Maritime Shores, Moors walk on water Engines return with no cures, no sight blurred While they stay killing their minds and saying they learn Fathers had names before they became slaves Seems like today it's only nicknames and pain You should be learning so pain could stop from these vermin German Nazi Inquisition is enslaving with sermons Declared independence, still giving Moors reverence Talking treaties with Muslims at Oval Office entrance To the entrance masses, keep them docile and passive Killing them, corralling blacks, acting like hostile fascists Take oaths to break them, unless it's from the large They give profits, we take them and neglect ancestors Playing Mr. Tuffy, smoking a dutch From the same master, bullies stealing your money for lunch Wanna drink from their bowl, cause they spike their punch With Clorox, I'm not guessing, but I have a hunch I can say I stand up to mercenary punks While you Facebook posing with Glocks cocked and shotguns pumped Why you don't pull up on the passenger side of the police car And bust on the police instead of your brother Guns and use them on targets moving Try KKK badge carriers in your hood cruising I'm not promoting violence, it's a point I'm proving Moore's methods do work but coons disapproving Kill it calling you out, but you're attacking the sheep And wanna show me how good you are with your hands and feet Never challenge a cop when they arresting your brother But we'll wear hoods and hold skittles, one after another Acting with lethal weapons, you melt Gibsons and Glovers Shot in the back of watching you suffer Black standing on corners and seconds life smothered She forgave him for a son's death to listen to mother Listen to common exercise in his five senses To end racism, stop looking through racial lenses Look at constitutional, not civil defenses Stop marching, the only thing that pickets is fences
Prophet warns all Muslims, governors, order to read proclamation at every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical, agitating speeches while at work, in their homes, or on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cards at Europeans, it causes confusion. Remember, your cards are for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the laws as laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button, cease wearing their turban and fez, and return to the state where the prophet, where I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet Noble Juali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet is therefore sending out a divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting their prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Noble Juali. To be proclaimed at every meeting. I am glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim I was only a joke and unreal. But now since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon, for their earthly salvation as American citizens. They are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me, so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that paid their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet Noble Juali. To the members of the Moorish Science Temple, Islam, this is the instruction from your holy prophet, from your prophet Noble Juali. Be faithful unto your forefathers' divine and national creed, that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world, and his judgment is now on, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of time is drawing near, so says Allah to his divine prophet, I Noble Juali, and that's why many hearts have been turned to stone, and many have eyes to see but cannot see ears to hear but can I hear, lest they would be confounded of their sins. These are trying hours now, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid, and to cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your profit. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly, and Allah would bless you for your good work. Peace. Your divine prophet, Noble Juali. Islam. So um, today we're gonna we're just gonna um, do a recap of um, last night's session. Some knowledge dropped last night at um, at the Chiefs. There was knowledge, a lot of knowledge dropped at the um, Chiefs lecture last night. 
If you haven't um, checked it out, make sure you go check out um, Chief Yuya on YouTube. They got a website and all that. Um, impacting info. Um, but before we do that, since people like to screen share stuff, we're going to screen share something. This quick article recently came out. Right? The article came out today. So we just want to read that article just to, you know, let people see that we know exactly what we're talking about. Islam. 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 So um, this article is entitled Abusing Checking Abuse of Red Cap and Igbo Chieftaincy Institution in February 2014. This is from the Premium Times, January 28th, 2018. So going back for you. The red cap in Igbo land is a symbol of authority, culture, and tradition. And everybody right there, you see the red caps, right? All the people on the chat, all the people watching online, remember this is Nigeria. Keep in mind, this is Nigeria. And then more is here. Um, we're just showing um, a picture of all these Igbo chiefs. They got the little short fez, like what Setenra has. Right? And then just fez is just all over the place. Right? Um, it has become co a common sight nowadays, especially in cities within and outside the Igbo land, to see men without traditional titles wearing red caps meant for chiefs. Right? This, remember, this is Nigeria, all the stuff these people say that they come from and they're, you know, they're African and all that. Unapologetically <coughs> African. Right? While some of these men wear the red cap out of sheer ignorance, others wear the cap out of utter mischief, deceptively parading themselves as chiefs. Nevertheless, a handful of cap wearers indeed deserve to wear quote-unquote red caps as they are titled men and chiefs who are recognized in their various communities as Ozos, Nez, N-Z-E-S, Itchies, Obufis, and so on. By most accounts, the red cap in Igbo land is a symbol of authority, culture, and tradition. And it represents the chieftaincy institution, its power and authority. Alright, so just look up the chieftaincy institution so you have a perspective as to how the quote unquote heads in the tribal whatever over there deal with making people chiefs or whatever. Right? Making them come into the order, go through the little rituals, and then get their little, you know the ability to wear the red cap. The categories of chiefs who are permitted to wear this sacred cap must have met certain standards which they still maintain in their respective communities. For instance, they are not expected to lie, swindle, or engage in any activity that can bring the traditional institution into disrepute. So it's the, they can't do certain things. And then we, we, when we bring up no Jwali, and then he telling us about the five principles so that we have a certain standard because we got these on. That we're not going to be looked at like everybody else who is parading around, maybe wearing these or wearing other stuff and making it seem like they have some type of authority to do things when they don't even have the knowledge to even be wearing what they're wearing. Right? When this goes down to, um, you know, fezes, um, um, onks, great seal pendants, whatever, you better be qualified to wear your stuff.
Peace, peace. Wow. That's good work. Wow. Wow. Mr. eBay, however, frowned at a situation where people where people of questionable character now wore the red caps and paraded themselves as chiefs or even got chieftaincy titles through fraudulent means. Right, so that's relative to these people that are here selling packages, telling people that they're bay and all that stuff here, buy a package 5,000, right? And we'll make you a bay. When that's, when that's their title. They can't, nobody can't sell them that. And then they're crazy thinking that they can go buy that. They, they, they obviously don't have it going on properly. Right? If they're thinking that um, um, people of questionable character now wear the red fez cap and parade themselves as chiefs or chieftaincy titles through fraudulent means or by exercising fraudulent means. Right? So the same thing that they're dealing with dirty moors over there, we're dealing with here. That there's people who on our side that think this is a joke and unreal. But over there, yeah. people over there who think that it's a joke <laughs> and unreal, we're just going to say that we're a chief and give people fezes and whatever like that, going against what the, the order of things is. Right? Now all this is leading up to, to where we're going today. The chief. The chief and all that yesterday. It is, it is regrettable that these days many fraudulent people get red cap titles through the back door and some even wear the cap without receiving it traditionally from anybody. As such, people parade themselves as chiefs and titled men. Remember again with the Juali lessons that priesthood is dead. And the only title is really El, Be, De, Al, Ali, anything else, anybody coming here talking about king, whoever. You know what I mean? Like you hear, um, um, Moors want to play like they got some superior knowledge more than somebody else. And they'll say, oh yeah, I'm king of the Moors. Right? And everybody's, you know, supporting somebody call themselves king when Moors are sheiks. Now, you can't tell me you're a Moor, tell me that your title's king. Or queen. Or some other stuff. Sounds Either you're a sheik or... Your, your title is B or L, or that's, that's your title. Yeah, double title, King B. <laughs> right? Because right? you just voided your title. <laughs> Play yourself. We regard such people as worthless. We have people in every community where Igbo people reside, who monitor their activities and make recommendations on who deserve chieftaincy titles. Mr. Ibe said that through efficient monitoring mechanisms, his council of chiefs had been able to identify all recognized Igbo chiefs residing in FCT, whatever the hell that is. He nonetheless concluded that non Igbos who never received Igbo titles, but were wearing the red cap, were doing that out of sheer ignorance. We have a list of all those who are traditionally and formally recognized as chiefs and titled men in the FCT. For those non igbo wearing the cap out of ignorance, it is their business. Such people are not representing the Igbo culture. That is no problem unless they began to parade themselves as Igbo chiefs. I know. Play that in with this thing about Moore Science Temple claim that they own things relative to Moorish nationality and birthrights. And temples telling people, oh well, you know, you can't come here because you wear you like to wear black shoes, so you only wear white shoes at this temple. Or we have <laughs> orange ties and you have to wear orange tie, you can't be part of this. Right? Denying people their right or keeping people ignorant of the fact that they have the right to say, oh, I declare my nationality. I'm not trying to side with corporate people. I'm not trying to side with fictitious people. You know what I mean? If I'm saying somebody's my government, they're going to look like me. If we're saying um, we're going to have uh, identification, it's going to be from our side. It's not going to be from some corporate people or whatever, right? 
and then the ones again they're using because they have this thing FCT which you know for Mars as soon as you see abbreviation you already know that that's corporate and then the fact that they're talking about they have some effective monitoring mechanisms to see who can wear this or who can't wear this lets us know that yeah okay they're probably playing some type of corporate for corporate game with with the people's birthright right so you can read the rest of the article it's called checking abuse Checking Abuse of Red Cap and Evo Chieftaincy Institution, Premium Times. You can read the rest of that. Now, the reason why we wanted to do that was, again, to put it on the record, once again, that all these people who are making claims that they came from Africa, they're in the diaspora right now, well, the place where you came from, in slavery or whatever, those guys were fezzes over there. So what the hell are you talking about that you're not more today? And you're black people and you're slaves that came from somewhere and you're all that stuff. When the people where the people where you came from were red fezzes, but you guys are Moors and they're not Moors. They're they're Nigerians, but they're not Moors. Okay. All right. So there was the big stink about um, Trump and him disrespecting Nigeria and all these places, saying that it's a shithole or whatever. And then, of course, all the Negroes are mad, oh yeah, he's racist and all that stuff. But nobody, nobody ever <coughs> asked the Nigerian. You know, <laughs> you know what, concerning that there was a guy that he was trying to get he went opposing the other guys in Nigeria's a shithole. And he tells them no. He bring up the information about the Moors when he was sitting in back. Yeah. He bring it up yeah. to them. Yeah. So, you know, I find I was like, not listening. You know the guy that was just going on and yeah, on and yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't listening. Yeah. Right. Like like they like they usually do. Don't listen. Right. Hard head, stiff neck people. They only want to learn at the point of a sword. That's the only way they want to learn. They don't want it easy. Right? More than making it easy. Let me know what's up. But they don't want that. So, again, we're going to go to Nigerians again and have them verify Donald Trump's whatever. Alright ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing? It's your boy NC Chaz and you know how we do it. It's definitely a wonderful day that the Lord has made today. Listen, very quickly, um, I want to address the situation of um, Donald Trump and of course a lot of people are going to make videos okay some videos will have impact some videos will come from people that actually have sense and some will come from people that don't have sense but let me tell you something I am a Nigerian living here in the United States and if I tell you that I am upset at Donald Trump for his statement I will be lying what do they say about change the first step to change is acceptance Nigeria is indeed a shithole. It is what it is. So I don't even understand why our people are upset. Let me tell you something. A country where its workers have not been paid in months is a shithole country. A country where its security system cannot protect lives, yet actually take lives is a shithole country a country where you pay for power and you don't get that power no light supply is a shithole country a country where the price of food is becoming unbearable for the citizens with no due process whatsoever is a shithole country a country where the justice system can be manipulated by certain people who have money power and influence is a shithole country a country where the poor the larger masses do not have a say is a shithole country a country where its president accepts that its citizens are criminals is a shithole country a country where people are dying every day because of hunger 
is a shithole country. A country where people go to school, get degrees and masters, and come out to no jobs. is a shithole country. Oh my goodness. A country where an individual who has worked so hard in school with a master's degree ends up driving Uber or ends up driving taxi. is a shithole country. So my people, what are you talking about? If your country was not a shithole, I bet you we would not be in the United States of America. We would not be in UK. We would not be in Malaysia. We would not be in Italy. We would be back in our countries. So if you are hurt or if you are offended by what a racist man, a man who doesn't like black people, a man who has made it so clear, a man who is totally arrogant, I must agree that this time around he said the truth. If you're offended, Let's join hands and fix our shithole countries. I am not speaking for any other country because I don't know. The one I know is the one I'm speaking about. Nigeria with its great potentials, with its substance, is a shithole at this moment. And if you want to vex, vex. For those of you who live in the United States, my God, don't let me start with you. Those of you who have not been to Nigeria in a while. Those of you who don't know the current situation of Nigeria. But you are always the first person to come and type some nonsense and attack some individual. My brother, it is not today that America has not always supported black people. We didn't see it today. It has been here even before some of us migrated or some of us were born into this system. So if you're hot, forget Facebook, forget Instagram, forget about going to declare what it is that you are and what profession that you are, whether you're a doctor that is saving lives in America, whether you're a pharmacist that is saving lives in America, my brother and sister, it is good to save lives and I thank you so much. But please, what are we doing to fix our fucking shithole country? If you're not doing anything, do not be upset. As for me, Chaz, I know what I'm doing. I'm on my way back to my country to go and fix the little that I can fix one step at a time. If we are 500,000 people from the diaspora, whether it is America, London, Malaysia, wherever you are, if we join hands, use technology, use our professions, some of us have gone to school, some of us are very educated, some of us are very well to do. If we come together, and one step at a time, begin to fix things, begin to turn things around. I bet you, in no time, no man, whether white or black, will come out and call African nations shithole. But for now, it is the truth. The truth is bitter, but we must accept it. Bye. What are you doing to make... America great again. Are you waiting for these Negro leaders or whatever? You better not be waiting for them. Because they have no intentions of making this better. So, we went to, um, we went to Shibuya's lecture yesterday. So we just want to make sure we put some things on the record to tie in that everybody everybody knows what's up and again because everybody knows what's up they don't want the dummies to know that's why the stream on YouTube is messing up no matter what as soon as we start as soon as we push broadcast stuff's messing up speakers not working we got Skype going on. We have Taj up there. Speaker's not working. Can't do anything. Computer's working all day. No problem. As soon as we got the Skype on, now stuff's going on. Now there's issues. You know, we're talking about whatever. You know, relative to what people should know. Stream's messing up. But that's why. Don't be mad. So let the stream do whatever it's doing. That's why we have a camera right there. And then we upload that. So you can still get whatever it is you're supposed to get. So... We want to um, just put it out to the Moors, whatever um, stuff, because that's all the Moors building with the Moor yesterday, and the Moors were in the building. So, if you have any high points from yesterday, um, just shoot those up and we'll just discuss some of those things from the lecture. Um, First, I pointed this thing to lift us up. 
the speaker, like, let us know. Let them know that we're there. Yeah. Whatever yeah. thing you did, and make sure. Remember, we were talking about um, this is something that the um, the sellout scholars would never do. Right? Some of the sellout scholars would never do. And to date, we can say, as far as you know, speaking up for the Mars, we can say. As far as as far as here is concerned, you can say um, Dr. Phil Valentine. Dr. Phil Valentine L came here, did a lecture. Moors were at the lecture, vending. Phil Valentine told all the Negroes. Remember, it was Negroes that brought Phil Valentine here. It wasn't Moors, mm -hmm. but Moors were at the lecture. Right? Mm -hmm. And Phil Valentine told all the Negroes, remember they rep him, told all the Negroes, make sure you guys go to that table over there and buy everything off those guys' table. Because the Moors have certain information that black people need to know, that black people don't want to know, which is why I'm telling you, go to those Moors over there. Right? Professor Dr. Kaba. Formerly known as Booker T. Coleman, came out, sat down with um, Brother Taj and um, Larry, black guy, black guy Larry. Brother Taj and Dr. Kaba. We're sitting down, doing the sit down. What is it? Four hours or something like that. The black guy was probably on there about ten minutes. <coughs> right? The whole other time, the conversation was between Dr. Kaba and Brother Tashrik Bey. And Dr. Kaba coming to more and more and more and more of a realization of, oh, there's, there's more to Moorish history than even what I know. And I thought I knew stuff about Moorish history, but now that I'm sitting down with this man, Tashri Bay or whatever, I'm getting some whole different insights that I'm going to have to humble myself and then go over here, go back, study some more. And then when you go check his website right now, now he's all in. He's going to the black lectures and telling them, you guys are Moors. Letting them know, doing classes, has music out, has whatever. Anything that he's doing is relative to M-O-O-R now. He's not even doing the black stuff, right? Professor James Small. Again, was here in the flesh. Black guys brought him here. Black guys brought him here, right? You think, you think these black guys came and checked the Mars or whatever since this lecture? No. Right? What, um, because I know you were there for most of it too. Yeah, I see that. What, what was, um, yeah, just some of the stuff that James Small brought up relative to, relative to the Mars. He even told them that. They are the Mars. Go ask them. Right? He did tell them that. Dr. Um, um, James, Small. Yeah, he yeah. did tell them. Go ask them. Right. They're right there. They're right there. Go ask them. If you think that what I'm saying is not what it is, mm -hmm. there's the Moors right there that I'm talking about on the board. Mm -hmm. Go ask them right there. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Right? Our brother Osiris, you were at that one too. Anything else that we missed with um, small with Professor Small? Yeah, like that, basically what the brother was saying, basically, because what happened is basically he forgot his whole lecture, like his whole presentation, so he was just using 
another presentation from somebody else, right? So he was basically reading everything word for word because it wasn't really his presentation, right? But anything that he freestyled, like from the dome, that it was all about words, pretty much when he was not reading from the slides. And then when he was referring to, you know, he was always tying back to the more somehow within when he was talking, when he's expanding on the, on the, um, his slide, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, also, remember once again, the, the repetitive theme, James Small just did a lecture with Sabir Bay and Tashri Bay. And James Small told Sabir Bay, I'm starting to learn more about the Moors. I have to. I can't be a scholar and not know about the Moors. Right? Um, you can get at Brother Sabir for the DVD of that. Or the um, email or whatever it is that they're going to send. Right? Um, so, the brother was there speaking up for the Moors. Right? Not in some... Um, like when you talk to black guys who are in the diaspora and whatever like that, how they talk. He was talking in favor of it, right? Now he was talking about... He was talking about... Um, one, one instance was... Um, um, there was a brother there that had on a black... He had on a black something on his head. And um, he was saying that it reminded him of some of his ancestors. Right? So every time he was scanning the room and then he got to the brother, his ancestors were talking to him to the brother because he was making this point of um, recognizing that, that the ancestors aren't using you. You're using them. You're not, oh yeah, ancestors or whatever like that, so that the ancestors could come down and then the ancestors are going to do something because you call them to do something. It's orders. Like, you're the ones in the moment. In the moment. They're the ones that are here to assist you while you're in the moment. Right? He made another reference of, um, um, you know, we're, we're sitting in the room here, but our higher self is on whatever plane that it is, and it's the one with the joystick playing us. And we're down here like, yeah, we got something going on, whatever like that, when it's, that has nothing to do with us. Right? We're just, we're just on, we're on the board. There's other people on the board, like, oh, yeah, we're going to move them there, move that guy there, bring these two over here, get them together to whatever it is that they do, because there's a higher thing going on. Right? Um... He brought the brother with the turban, and he was saying that as far as like that individual, it's not about that individual, it's about what is coming from that individual, right? A sister brought up, um, um, you know, how do we deal with, with Trump and... How do we deal with, you know, certain things? Now that we have this acquired knowledge, yeah, chemtrails, right? Um, there's chemtrails. How do we do deal with all this and having this acquired knowledge or whatever? And with the chemtrails, he's like, chemtrails, like chemtrails been around so long, we, we're, that's nothing now. Yeah, somebody bringing up chemtrails now as a threat on the people or whatever, those people are, they're new, yeah, they're new to some info. If they're worried about some cancer, that's the that should be the least of their worries right now, right? Um, one thing that I wanted to bring up because going back to that same theme was that um, what, one of the sisters making a comment she was talking about dimes, right? About how her uncle passed away or whatever like that, and she keeps seeing dimes, and then that's like a reference to oh him, you know what I mean, the uncle, a memory or whatever. And the chief was saying, well. You know, yeah, you can look at it like that, but also look at it as maybe that's you sending yourself a message. Yeah. Not
not not just your relative who brought this, you know what I mean, um, concept to you about when you see dimes, that's him. You know what I mean? It might actually be you on the higher realm trying to give yourself some messages or whatever. And that reminded me of a sister who I know that she's native. And when her mom passed away, there was a thing like that with dimes or whatever. So um, now it's every time I see dimes, I would tell her, your mom said what's up or whatever like that. Because she, um, like our, our, our and her relationship goes back to high school, right? So it was like, you know, knowing who her mom was and stuff like that, you know, certain people who weren't around or don't know wouldn't have that experience. It'll be just her, like seeing these dimes all the time, dimes, dimes, dimes all the time. Nobody else or whatever. You know what I mean? And I brought it up to her one day, damn, I keep seeing these dimes or whatever and all this stuff. And then she was saying, oh, you know, maybe it's my mom trying to whatever, so let me know when you see them. You know what I mean? And I've seen dimes, like crazy. You know what I mean? At the store, guy go in his pocket, five dimes drop out or whatever, right? So all these things to say that, that you know, what, what the chief was getting at was that you're not limited to here. You're not limited to the realm of the third dimension and things happening on the earth plane. There's a higher thing that we're actually connected to, which is where we should be putting our, our attention. Um, the other thing I was bringing up as an example is um, um, with the itch, if you have an itch, and then people usually, you know, would just, right? But they'll still be doing whatever it is. Oh, yeah, I got an itch or whatever like that. So he is saying, well, okay, the itch, right, at that moment in time that you have the itch, the itch is asking for your attention, right? The itch wants to be known, wants to be accepted, whatever. So take all your focus and put it to the itch, and the itch won't itch. Right? And making this, this correlation to as soon as something's happening on this plane, know that there's a spiritual counterpart to it that you have to be aware of, because this is why we're the conscious people or we know or whatever like that, right? So we have to be the ones that are aware to pick up on certain things so we know, okay, itch needs attention, just give it some attention and then it's not going to be no big deal. Um, he was talking about, um, you know, people who are, are, you know, fake leaders or whatever. Don't even pay them any money. Just let the fake leaders and then the people following the fake leaders keep following to wherever they're going because we can't even use them. Let's just deal with the people who actually have focus, have, could pay attention, can, you know what I mean? Call spirits, talk to spirits, whatever, whatever. Right? Um, any um, other? I know Tess had some... Some other ones too. Um, yeah. He's more. He's the one. Oh, he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mag magic man. Magic man. <laughs> I wasn't even going to talk about the lecture I was going to mention earlier that day. <laughs> we were thinking about oh, the brother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking about, talk about the brother. That. Might as well. Might as well. And, um, since he walked in on cue. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in a meeting talking about just mentioning, oh, you know, who was at Noble Drew Ali Day um, on Mufti duty, right? So <laughs> we're talking about um, this brother here, Brother Uti, and Islam brother. <laughs> and just on cue, um, he called Kujo. So we're talking about him, talking about him. A couple of us weren't sure who, who, who are we talking about. Oh, the tall brother. Okay, yeah, and then we all, as soon as we all kind of had it in our mind who, who it was, boom, we called Kujo's phone. You know, just what's up, Islam. And that was that's earlier in the in the in the day before the lecture. Um. Yeah. So then that you know, just going back to what the brother said about um, the lecturer was saying that you know everything happens for a reason pay attention to you know what's going on in the moment right because it's for everything is for a reason you don't, you don't no coincidences. right exactly right there's, there's, all, there's always a reason for the happening because what the happening is 
there, there's, there's something going on. You know what I mean? And once, once you could pinpoint, or once you could make the connection between the happening and where, where the happening manifested from, now you could go past the happening and get to whatever it is that's supposed to be, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be going down. Right? Um, he was talking about um, um, the whole idea of rituals and that people's, people's perception of the ritual is, you know what, uh, okay, so you put the thing down on the thing and then you do the, <laughs> and then you, you know, do like this <laughs> in order for the ritual. Mm -hmm. When you're supposed to be the one that makes up the ritual. Because you're the one that has the access to the energy or the information. You're the one that the ancestors are using, right? And again, you know, even correcting those concepts that we're the ones using the ancestors, right? They're not, we're not here being used by them, right? We're actually the ones. We are the, the, the ancients that's here again. I just want to make a comment too that if it is a flip like that where the ancestors are using us, that's a, a violation of the law. Right. You know, it doesn't work like right. that. You know, and that's where possession comes in where people are actually taken out of the body and something's replaced. Used. <laughs> yep, their body's being used by something else. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Right. Well, more said the sound is now starting to get clear. Was there. Oh, you mentioned too, you know, at the end of lectures, people always crowd up to him and oh, yeah. ask him all yeah. extra questions and whatever and whatever. When yeah. they don't even, um, like he asked, who has my contact info? You know, everybody has his contact info or whatever. And then he said, who's other? Who else's contact info do you have in the room? Community. Nobody. Mm. All right. So nobody really. Like people were coming to, people were in there to 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 take to take in his lecture, but at the same time, they weren't connecting with each other. With each other, right? So again, the the and and the, and the whole the whole theme that he was leading to was um this idea of of um the people coming together so that some stuff would get done. Mm -hmm. Not coming together, the lecture. And then everybody just goes their own way after a lecture and nothing happens because nobody got nobody's number, nobody got anybody's info, everybody just came, oh yeah, crowd around, crowd around the guy whose lecture it is, no different like when we always cuss people about when Umar Johnson came here and you have people in the community who, you know, they run their own business or whatever like that, they're there vending and then he comes here from wherever, and then uh, actually it was him and um, polite that this went down with, and they had they had like the tables like you know regular six foot table or whatever, right? And then on the table their books were like here on the table like straight across. That was all their books, right? And these people left with their books here. And then all the people who are from here, all their stuff is still up here. Right? And then you want to know how come, well, if you just gave that guy 8,000, because you bought all his books, his books are like 50 each and up or whatever. He left with nothing. And then everybody who was here, they, they left with products still. Right? Because... No community. Crop like when we say when we say after the lecture, the whole the whole place, everybody was at that those people's table. Everybody in the building. Like we're talking about 
JCA. Right? If you've been to JCA, you know the capacity of JCA. Okay, so you know we'll say we'll say not full house, maybe 80% of the chairs filled. When lecture was done, everybody. Now one person from here, because I was sitting there watching, me and Amari sitting there watching, we're like, okay, let's just see how much people <laughs> come to our table. We already know nobody's coming to our table, right? We're just there. One or two people that come up, yeah, here's the flyer or whatever, you know what I mean? But we know that our people don't want this, right? So we're just there, you know, just to see if they're going to really support. They thought it would be, come on out, you know, okay, come then, we'll give you guys table for free and stuff like that. Because the wars need to be there or whatever, okay? Well, we're there. And we're there, nobody's not coming to our table. Why are we here? What's the purpose of us being here? Because again, you know, he made the point. How many times have you seen them kill a Hebrew Israelite in the street? Yeah. And everybody's like, how many times have you seen them kill a more in the street? How many times have you seen them kill the nation of Islam or whatever? And he was bringing back the same thing because yeah, those people mean. have some type of common unity, which is really with what the strength is that these people really fear. They fear us being together, regardless of how we look. All the people with the right mind, and then their heart and their mind are in the same place, and then their soul's in the same place as their heart and their mind, and they got certain morals or whatever, they fear those people coming together and uniting. Because that's where the power is going to come from that the people claim that they don't have, so they have to, you know, yell for it or march for it or do whatever that really isn't, yeah, generate no power that way, right? Um, community. Okay. Uh, community from uh, Black's Law Dictionary. Neighborhood, vicinity, synonymous with locality. Um, people who reside in a locality in more or less proximity. A society or body of people living in the same place under the same laws and regulations who have common rights, privileges, and interests. And then it connotes a, con a congeries of common interests arising from associations, social, business, religious, governmental, scholastic, recreational. Uh, the term community as used in a statute providing that communities may be incorporated for the purpose of supplying inhabitants with water should be construed to include all the inhabitants of the district having a community of interests or obtaining for themselves in common a water supply for domestic use uh, in connection with the rule requiring for purposes of impeachment a knowledge of the character of the witness in the community or neighborhood in which he resides the term community means generally where the person is well known and has established a reputation so yeah those last three were the yeah the, the, the main ones. the main points yeah right society when you go back to um, the um, Resolution 75, you got it right there on the, on the wall. Um, they talk about the Morris Society in Philadelphia, right? Because it was really you know, a community of people that are, have the same common rights, same common interests, you know what I mean? Society or body of people working together in harmony or the same thing, and then that's what it, that's what it is. Right? When, you know, and again, we know for, for um, the sake of um, disruption or argument, whatever like that, we already know that we're not this, but we understand the point that he was making with why he brought up the people recognizing this. Right? And certain people, certain things don't happen to. Now, while we were um, closing out, while we were coming down to the end, he was making the point of doing lectures, you know, when he does lectures or whatever. And um, he would do a lecture, and any, because of, of what he's dealing with as far as the information, um, his lectures are make sure that, you know, checks out the place, make sure his eyes are up, make sure he's looking at everybody, focusing on what's going on as far as in the vicinity. 
And how much when you right. see them doing notes, it uplifts it too and it pushes it. Right, true. When you see them doing notes in the audience. Yeah, 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 notes, yeah, yeah. Seeing people take notes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's, there's the certain audience. things that's expected. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, in order for him to even feel feel comfortable enough to just let the spirit use you and him be able to spit the info, right? And having to hold back because he realized that, oh, people are sleeping and, you know what I mean, not taking notes and whatever like that. So why am I even going to put out some info? I'll just be up here just, uh, 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 until, you know, and two hours and then that's it. Let's go home because nothing's going to happen, right? Um, but what he was making the point of is, was that, you know, and and remember that how how the how the place was set up is that when you when you enter right it's just similar to this the door it was in front of him so the people aren't really seeing you know what I mean what's what he's seeing yeah right yeah. so he was talking about how um, as he's there at the front he didn't have to do this you know, scan the room or whatever like that. He didn't have to do, do, you know, do a check of the room or nothing like that because the more has been in the back posted up. And they never sit down. All mm -hmm. night. Never sit down. You know, and he's making the point mm -hmm. that there's a standard that these people bring, right? When they're around, you don't have to worry about protect whatever or nothing like that because that's that's what they're there for you know what i mean this is a, and remember this is not a morris school of thought per se right this is just a brother dealing with you know um Igbo tradition orishas you know what i mean things like that divination throw cowrie shells get a reading and stuff like that right this is this is the school of thought that he's in but he knew that oh more's at the door <laughs> Okay, we could do whatever we're supposed to do. I'm not threatened. There's, there could be no threat. And, you know, it was, it was you know, again, like, being, being in certain situations, being in certain places, it might not necessarily be it was for you there. You know what I mean? It was for other things because we went, and the only reason that we had to be back there because there was no seats to sit down. Or we would have just went like everybody else sat down and it wouldn't even been anything. But a point had to be made relative to, you know, the connection of the Moors, because he was also talking about um, uh, things for rituals. And then he brought up oils and using um, um, herbs, and essential herbs and essential oils and stuff like that and rituals and all that. and. You know, Europeans even having this concept of, you know, this whole new age idea of, you know, um, crystals and stones and oils for this and da, da 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 That's all stuff they learned from the Moors. Right? Now, whoever's there, that might have been something that just, something in conversation, something he said, nothing really to take serious because we're not here for that. But we know that that was brought up because we were there. Right? That point wouldn't have been made further, right, if we weren't in attendance. For, for him to have a reference point to know, okay, there's a certain, there's a certain plateau that this thing is, is at just because these individuals are here. Because now, yeah, because he has to cater to us now because we're here. You can't cater to the dumb dumb people who don't know about this. Because remember, if he's Igbo, Nigerian, um, Ghanaian, school of thought individual, he knows that fezes and all that stuff is. That's why he read the article from the beginning. That it's known that this, this is a chiefly headwear. So he was really, he was really practicing for the chiefs. If again, if we do that thing about what he said, the brother with the turban represented somebody in his ancestors, who we represent. Knowing that it's a modern thing that there's people in Nigeria that wear fezes that are chiefs of tribes. Right? What, you know, where, 
where would that lead him to go? Right? Just for the simple fact of the presence of the Moors being there. Right? And, you know, in, in the end, um, I know Noor, I don't know if you want to go into the conversation that you and him were having at the end. Because I know you and him were building a little bit at the end. No, it was just a uh, follow up on the things with my sister. Okay, all right, okay. And how yeah. they, it happened just the way you say, it. just like how you did the thought of you when you walked in. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's all the, the energy flow, but you got to know to recognize it when it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like me and my sister, we always recognize these things. Yeah. You could say, oh, he's calling me, and take the phone and call her. I said, you were calling me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even my sister, she, she told me, there's a guy she met down there, dreadlocks that's on the farm. He's the only one that got what she got. Yeah. Like, understood. The rest right, right. is... The rest of the, yeah. They don't even know what's going on. They don't know what's going on. And then the guy called her one morning. I said, sister, you called me, man. So I have to walk in the rain to come to the phone, mm. to put minutes on my phone to call you. And my sister said, I don't even have minutes to call him. But he see me calling him 16 times. And he said, it's my ancestors that... The way she, you yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. he never called him, but he said on his phone, he said, You called me 16 missed yep. calls. Yeah, he never made one call, yeah. so he didn't try to tell him, No, I didn't. She just rolled with it and do what they had to do. Yeah, right. Um, um, so. It's, it's, it's common knowledge among the people who know yeah. when it comes to, you know what I mean, um, spirituality, metaphysics, um, astrology, whatever. There's a certain expected mindset that one's supposed to have today, right? Too much access to information for people to be dumbed down today. Mm -hmm. If people choose dumb down today, it's, it's strictly due to consent to being that. Coming uh, community. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation, <coughs> and uh, I was making mention that you know, a business. If anybody says for business, the mind state shouldn't really be to make the most amount of money that you can make, mm -hmm. because um, with a business, if it's centralized upon the basis of your morals and your culture and values and traditions for the nation, your business is supposed to outlive your right. actual lifespan. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because it's for the promotion of what the individual's interests are for the nation. And that is supposed to, that's that's three sixty. That doesn't ever stop. Right, right. You know that doesn't ever stop. Even though you see this United States government shut down, not even whatever that stopped. Anyways, coming off the topic, but you know, um, I, I, I say I because you know, I I didn't really know much about more when I came when I when I came to the more science, but. As I hear the them say all the time, you don't have to study to know more science before you can actually start acknowledging that you're using more. Mm -hmm. So I say that because um, we as people got to stop this individuality thing like I this and oh I'm yep. trying to get this and okay, you know, it's one thing to say the plans that we're doing right now, um, we're doing it to better ourselves, to help the people that we want to help and the people that we do need to help and the people that we're obligated to help, but you know, at the end of the day, um, we must be mindful that it's not about I, 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 and I, and I. That's true. Dude, I just realized you're on your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I choose if I said someone put me there. <laughs> oh, okay. Just like yeah. Bring that up here for a second. I just realized that. <laughs> Convention picture. Mm -hmm. We had the convention picture, um, the Morris Science Temple of America convention picture, where at 
the um, bottom bottom left side, give that a word. At the bottom left side, um, there's a man on there that looks like Taj, right? And then um, Brother Supreme, a couple of days ago, like further up in the picture, at the top row, there's a sister like kind of in the back, just looking, looking like Sister Roz. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, the ancestors are definitely back. Right here again. <laughs> to do what's supposed to get done. Right? It's not even a joke out here. It's not even a joke. Right? Um, any other um, standout things from? I'm just going to check the um, email right now. But any other things that stood out? From yesterday. And also, too, if anybody has questions, you can just shoot those out. We're um, today's Q and A. Day. I just want to say this in regards to the word community, and just looking at it as a compound word. It's really saying community. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? And if we're really thinking about building with each other and making this world a better place and and uplifting fallen humanity, we have to come together for a common unity that respects all of us as a part of the human family and recognizing that. There's been an incorporation and domination that's been subjugating us all mm -hmm. to work through a corporation with, rather than working through the, the connection with our ancestors and, and, and connecting us to the land. And when we come back to that concept of family, you know, our souls are expressed and gives us this nobility and yeah. connection to the planet. Like, there's no corporation that can really subjugate us when we have that mindset. Exactly. And when we all come together, we come to unity and we come as a family. And that's what this is all about. It's just uplifting this fallen humanity. Yep. And you, know, you weren't even there yesterday, and then you brought that up too when he was talking about um, um, the whole money thing. Well, not need money. Right? Everybody thinks, oh yeah, in order for us to be a community, we need to have some type of whatever. And saying, well, no. Nah, if you got the potatoes, and I got the plumbing, and then that individual has the mechanic, and then he has the holistic health, whatever, then there's no need for finance. There's no need for any finance. You know what I mean? The money becomes the money becomes a medium of exchange. I'm gonna go here hungry and want some potatoes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't have potatoes, there's a lettuce guy. Or a beets guy. Or whatever it is that we need in order to say, okay, now we got and even yeah. with what you're saying about um, how at that at that lecture there was like people coming from all over and only one person was really having a material soul right. from everybody. Yeah. If everybody was just working together, you could have bought everybody's stuff so everybody feels the, the benefit of being there and, and getting their information out. And then whatever you're buying, you're just exchanging with the community. Yeah. It's like everybody could have had the potential to, you know, make their profit, you know, feel comfortable, feel happy. Opposed to one person making it all and everybody else feeling like, well, exactly. why was I even here? Why so people here? would just like work together and be like, yo, I'm going to grab this one, you grab that one, and I'll, mm. when I finish, we'll, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. switch up. You know what I mean? Yeah. That way everybody yeah. works together. The, the, the exchange shows the real value. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's not making the profit more important than what the people are representing. Mm -hmm. And one more point to that is that you're not supporting somebody else to get something. Yes. Because it also says to be. With these corporations, they don't care how much people you have to kill to get what no. you need, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to purchase numbers. Mm -hmm. You want to be unified and get that all to Yeah, we put the corporation in the place. Mm -hmm. They're definitely playing around today, but... Yeah, I wanted to add... Yeah, this is from the metaphysical dictionary. Mm -hmm. I was looking for the uh, community, but they have neighbor. Right, and... The, name, the word neighbor, it, der it derives from the word, um, I think it's pronounced Neil, um, N-I-N-E-I-E-L, Neil, and it says, God's dwelling place, inhabitants, inhabitants, inhabitants of God, dwelling place of the Most High. A border city of Asher in the promised land. The metaphor, the metaphor is a group of thoughts established in truth, abiding places of spirit. In brackets, God's dwelling place. 
neighbor who is my neighbor through 1029 metaphysics every soul that dwells upon the earth is your neighbor my neighbor there is no such thing as distance in spirit nor in the operation of spiritual laws through us must the law of divine love binds up and heal wounds, resolve errors, and restore light and order from out of chaos. Your neighbor, Luke 10, 25 to 37, refers to the outer form in which life manifests, whether it be your own body, the body of other person, or of animals. And then it goes on some more, but... Mm -hmm. I just wanted to point on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Any other comments on that? So, no, I just found it um, interesting. It said, your neighbor is, your neighbor is, is every living soul. Yep. Mm -hmm. on, in the planet. I think you right. said human, something, human in space or something. I heard on planet. Animals. Animals. Well, animals. animals too, yeah. Animals yeah. too. That's a big yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Remember, no withdrawal leave. that taught through the Quran that every every living thing is bound by a cord mm. <coughs> right when um, um, he also said um, when man honors man he honors Allah and going back to the same thing that there's this connection there's this interwoven what's up bro <laughs> There's this interwoven um, um, spirit energy that is connecting to all things that are on that frequency, right? All things that are quote unquote living. You know what I mean? Have that, have that connection, right? So again, if anybody has questions, you could throw those out. We got, we got a few, few questions in here, so we'll deal with some of those. Um, there was something yesterday about the melanin, when you were saying about the melanin. Um, I didn't get the full picture of what you were saying. Yeah, you were saying like, somebody asked what it is, what does it do, he said, you know, melanin is like a amplifier. Yeah, amplifier, yeah, yeah. 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 And he said, you know. Conscious community, we like to take it as a as a point of pride and whatever. But we said that you know melanin is not good. Melanin is not bad. You know melanin just is. So if there's you know someone who's can use melanin for really good things and someone can use their melanin, melanin for really yeah, bad things. Bad thing, yeah. You know it's funny when you say the word melanin. I'm hearing knowledge of. That's not, that's the that's the thing that he was making point of that that the conscious community people have a mindset that melanin is theirs. Yeah, yeah. Just limited to them. <laughs> when melanin is something that everything that's living has got. Yeah. And, oh yeah, and then he was making up the thing about um he was talking about um Krishna mm -hmm. in, in 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 ancient times they had Krishna depicted as black. Mm -hmm. Right? And later, he became green. Mm. Because then, you know, it, it, it has people in dreamland opposed to dealing with the reality. That Krishna was a brother. Right? But as soon as you get them into green people and, you know, he was hawkhead people or whatever. Krishna you know what I mean? I mean, I'm blue. Yeah, right. They made him blue, right? 
right? Um, well, yeah, he was talking about Osiris being green, and then the rel the relation of melanin being the the green, the, the green yeah. that you know they're still talking about melanin even if they say green or purple or whatever, they're still talking about the same thing. So you can't just limit it. It can't be something just limited to these beings only is what melanin is connected to. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah, that's something that that's something that people know, you know, has I, I wasn't there but people not only in the conscious community but just people in general, you know, gotta get off his mindset this I don't know if he's still on his mind to this black, white, whatever, yeah. or, or, or you liking them or not liking them because mm -hmm. but what he doesn't like nobody because how they look, it's what do we see your heart to be? Yeah. Um, passport. Um, Asamu, brother Asamu L. Greetings, I study the information you provide and I can't understand why there are so many coons among us. The Moriscos you addressed in a video the other day are pure coons. I wanted to give you this link for quote unquote US passports. I want to establish our own Al Moroccan Northwest Mexican passports and thus my research brought me here. At the very bottom of the site, of this site, the Europeans even state that proclaiming your nationality only needs to be stated out of your mouth. They don't actually say more, but we can read. Yet for sellouts, yet these sellouts are having a fire sale trying to confuse the movement, USAR, etc. Also, I smashed this dude with facts and knowledge, and he made YouTube videos trying to imply that RV Bay site isn't legit. Wow. Bill Calloway is continuously selling our people back into slavery and telling them to find their Indian tribe and to nationalize through the U.S. corporation as he has done. Wow. Meanwhile, the link I provided below from the Europeans themselves says that if you only need, says that you only need to be, you only need to profess it out of your mouth. Become a national, but not a citizen of the United States by making a declaration under oath before any court established by the Constitution or laws of the United States or any other court or record in the Commonwealth in the form as follows. I being duly swear, declare my intention to be a national, but not a citizen of the United States. One more thing. Okay, so before we go to there, um, you got passport there? Yeah. All right. Okay, so, definition of passport from Black Saw Dictionary, um, maritime definition, a document issued to a neutral merchant vessel by her own government during the progress of a war to be carried on the voyage to evidence her nationality and protect her against the cruisers of the belligerent powers. This paper is otherwise called a pass, sea pass, um, sea letter, sea brief. It usually contains the captain's or master's name and residence, the name, property, description, tonnage, and destination of the ship, the nature and quantity of the cargo, the place from whence it came, and its destination, with such other matters as the practice of the place requires. In international law, a license or a safe conduct issued during the progress of a war authorizing a person to remove himself or her or his effects from the territory of one of the belligerent nations to another country or to travel from country to country without arrest or detention on account of the war. In American law, a special instrument intended for the protection of American vessels against the Barbary powers, usually called a maritime pass. Also a document addressed to foreign powers which certifies that the person therein described is a citizen of the United States and which requests for him while abroad permission to come and go as well as lawful aid and protection. United States versus broader CCA and Y 113, whatever. Uh, in modern law, a warrant of protection and authority to travel granted by the competent officer to persons moving from place to place. And that's, those okay. are the four different sub okay. um, definitions. So the part would be um, Congo and whatever, read that part again. Um, maritime one? Maritime? Um, it's all about cargo and 
ship yeah. set and stuff like that. Yeah, um, maritime. A document issued to a neutral merchant vessel by her own government during the progress of a war to be carried on the voyage to evidence her nationality and protect her against the cruisers of the belligerent powers. This paper is otherwise called a pass, sea pass, sea letter, sea brief. It usually contains the captain's or master's name and residence. Right, okay, so it usually, uh, it usually has the captain, captain's name, residence, yeah. Um, property, description, tonnage, <coughs> and destination of the ship. Then All right, so when you look at the passport, it'll tell you that it's Canada's, who's the captain, right? It'll have the property on there, which is supposed to be the being, your picture identifying what the property looks like, the age of the property, the height of the property, the eye color of the property, the whatever, describing the property, right? Remember that um, the birth certificate is tied to it because the birth that they're talking about is ERTH, which is going back to the Admiralty Maritime, not the IRTH, meaning coming out the womb which is going back to the property thing again, right? Um, and then what, what else did it go into? Um, yeah, description of the ship, the nature and quantity of the cargo, the place from whence it comes and its destination, with such other matters as the practice of the place requires. Right, so, and then, and then when you go through the pages, that has the stamp with everywhere that you went, which is dealing with the whole destination, right? Now, which is why, because it's dealing with Maritime Admiralty, and we know as Moors we're not on the seas if we're on the land, then that shouldn't even be something that would really apply at all. Wouldn't you yeah. like where right? And then also to remember that all ports are borders. And it's not in the middle of the land, it's at the waters. The port, the border supposed to be the place where you show the passport, there's supposed to be water there. Water there, yeah. yeah. If there's no water there, then that place can't qualify as a passport being used here, right? But everywhere we go, it's it's on land, which is the point why Juali brought in the whole thing about declaring nationality. He brought your title to your vast estate, because the estate is the land. So all you would need is your nationality card to pass the so-called border or whatever, if they say that there's a border. But again, we have this issue of there hasn't been that kind of activity. There hasn't been en mass more showing their nationality card as their identification for whatever. There's only been a few mores who have enough courage to stand up for that that would do that. When anybody with a nationality card should be doing that, including people that are in more science temple that are claiming that this is some religious whatever, even their nationality card they're supposed to be using as proof that this is who it is that we are. It's not have this, but then the other documents as well, and then the names aren't matching and all that stuff. It should be a standard thing, right? And I just want to say too, um, when they restrict us from using our, our national card for our identification and say we have to use a passport or whatever, that is also a form of um, sub subjugation that we can take legal action against because they're trying to put us in a class, they're, they're classing us, they're restricting our rights and freedoms and no corporation has the right to do that and if they're going to try to like, you know, use, you know, these policy enforcers or their private security to restrict you or to detain you or to harm you in any way from actually being able to freely travel because again like all the even in this constitution says that they you can travel wherever right you know they're not gonna try to restrict you right. but they but then it's like how they word things it's like they're gonna restrict the Canadian citizens but if you're somebody else that you know we don't have jurisdiction then you can't over. really do nothing yeah. but it's like we don't have the knowledge of how we can take action against them for violating our rights and if we have enough people who are conscious of like how to use this legal system yeah. and, and hold them accountable because again even with what um, the Pope did with uh, Obama like letting them know that all the corporations they got no they got no protection anymore no, zero protection so yeah. like realistically it's free any, like any the time they violate us now yeah. we can take them and hold them to account yeah. and they're the ones that are going to be losing 
but it's like they're trying to keep us afraid, like, oh, it can't be done, we don't, like, it's impossible, you just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and you're going to be okay, but right. by keeping that thing going, nothing's going to change, and we have to stand up for ourselves, recognize that operating under these jurisdiction and with these passports or whatever are only going to keep qualifying us into this form of indoctrinated slavery, yeah. and once we do use this 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 knowledge and, and use our identification and then be damaged by it, we have to take the next step the next and, steps. and, and, and do exactly. something about it, you know, exactly. throw a commercial lien on them, yep. you know, and if it's the, if it just happens to be person air, airport, you got to put a lien on, then that's what you got to do. That's what it is. You know what yep. I mean? And then you're going to have us to reclaim. Reclaim right. everything. You're going to have us to reclaim if you do because that. Because again, they got no protection. Yeah, no? yeah. And, and again, it's like, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the trust it's the people's trust that this thing is over, right? Or the people's distrust that this is over, why stuff's going on and all is going on. You know what I mean? Because if we look at, say, if we even if we use Brother Taj, for example, we got 30 years he's been telling people that stuff's done. Yeah. You still, like, you know what I mean? Europeans came out, told them that this stuff's done. You know what I mean? Pope came out, wrote letters and all yeah. that stuff, saying that this stuff's done. Like, one more... What more has to be told that, that. <laughs> that it's it's time for the people to freaking take the steps to make sure that they're doing their um, so-called black president told it. Everybody yeah. brought it up to them. So called black president. Their black president told, told them. You know what I mean? We're gonna sign the UN declaration just because we already know that, you know, this thing's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Why would he go against why would he do that against the policy of the people who were in before that refused to sign? Mm -hmm. You named the president from UN declarations came out right now. We're not signing. Canada, no, we're not signing. Nope, forget it. We're not signing nothing like that. You guys are going to be following the statutes, codes, ordinances. Forget anything else that you guys are talking about. And then now, again, we have so them taking the position of, you know, they're the ones that are issuing certain things. So now, you know, Moors are looking at, well, Sid, if this is ours, then we should be issuing the things. Why Why them? Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, logical argument. But if a passport is for the United States ships to escape the Barbary powers, and we're the Barbary powers, clearly passports aren't for us to have. Clearly passports aren't for us. And as soon as we take the position of, oh, well, we have to create some card or create some whatever when nationality card is supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be the passport. That's supposed to be the ID. That's supposed to be the SIN number. That's supposed to be anything that they say ID, or oh, that's what it is. And then it's supposed to be like what you're saying, oh, we, oh, there's no jurisdiction, okay, so here's whatever it is that you claim that you want. Mm -hmm. That's not what we question, because you know, based on this ID that you gave me, you're Aboriginal Indigenous. And then when we go over here, UN Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, we have a right as Indigenous people to be assisted by the state once we say, hey, we need assistance. They're not supposed to be questioning, no. well, yeah. what tribe are you and, well, did Canada recognize your stuff and all that? They're not supposed to be going there. But they go there because of the lack of the activity. They which feel the fear behind the right, what we that can do to them. Right, right. And also, even when you go on travel from one set country to another, so in the past, or then they want to know your motive there. Right, your purpose there. You know, according to definition. Where, where it's still slavery, because mm -hmm. you're not even passing the port mm -hmm. yet <laughs> when you show the passport. Mm -hmm. You still have to go through the BS with the passport. Mm -hmm. They're still going to stop at yeah, where you're going, you know what I mean? Give you their, you know, authority, whatever it is that they, yeah. you know? Behind the glass or whatever, you see your stuff and all that. Well, you need to go over there. Who's there to tell you you can operate as the force in which you're supposed to do what you're destined to do? Right. Right. And again, it's supposed it's supposed to be be that. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be them yielding at all times. No different than we use the example all the time of anybody who has plates that aren't. Canadian plates, they never get stopped for anything. If they do get stopped, they just get a warning and they go about their business. 
You know why you're giving them tickets? Yeah. But they're going to pay tickets. Like, why would they pay a ticket from here when they're not from here? <laughs> you know what I mean? What do you mean pay a ticket? For what? You're right? I'm not coming back here ever. <laughs> you know? Um, another thing more brought up. <laughs> One more thing I would like to add or examine is the first episode of Jeopardy, of Jeopardy, episode 1, January 2018, opening with the Constitution, and then the start of Double Jeopardy round, they go to the flags category. By the end of the week, Alex Trebek was taking medical leave after undergoing surgery to remove blood clots from his brain. <laughs> really? <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'm stressing it, maybe I'm not. No, you're not stretching it. <laughs> this man drank the water, then he put it out. Put the water on. Yeah, what is that? Oh, yeah. Blood clot. <laughs> I'd just like to make a uh, mention to. Um I don't know if anybody's seen uh, this new X-Files show that's been on. Not either. But um, I don't watch TV, but I happened to catch uh, the, 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 least, the last uh, recent episode. And uh, to me, man, it was really interesting because it's like we all expect disclosure to happen where, you know, the governments are going to come up and have the TV cameras out and they're going to be like, okay, we've been doing this and we've been doing this and we're sorry. And that's what people expect is going to happen for disclosure to happen. But what's really going down is they're slipping information through our media, you know, through these television shows. So everybody's there programming and, and tuning in to what's being said. And they can say and do anything. And it's like, what I've seen uh, with this X-Files episode, it's uh, season 11, episode 4. If you watch it, they keep mentioning the fall of Grenada. You know, and they're saying that it's like, oh, the U.S. invaded Grenada. And how, in regards to, like, you know, what's been going on, this is, like, the, the single most important point that is in regards to, like, the truth is out there. And the whole, the, there's an interesting exchange between... Um, uh, between Mulder and this guy called Dr. They, which is like the guy that's doing all this crazy stuff. What's his name? Uh, Dr. They. And the, 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 situ this, the episode was based around the Mandela effect. So about how things people remember yeah. aren't the same. And it was a big, like, a joke. It was yeah. like a lot of, like, you know, jokes about the episode making it really fun. And you know X-Files. It was yeah. about suspense, you know. It was about discovering these unknown truths and exposing things yeah. and making things, like, really interesting. Now it's like a big farce, but what they what they were saying that particular episode, and they even had Doctor Day um, with the Moorish fez on, and he had the sword over top of it. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's all the symbolism, you know. Right, right. And there's like making well, jokes about with Trump, you know, and and with this exchange with Mulder, they were basically saying, yeah, you know, we're telling you the truth, we're we're giving you disclosure, like every every chance we get, but it's like nobody knows what to believe anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's where we're winning because we can put so much truth out there and then put a little bit of fake information and people don't know what's real. So people are just confused and meanwhile we're telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, same way Obama got exposed and sat down by the Pope. We've been told the truth over and over and over. Yeah. And they're just like letting it out and it's like again it's to stop the karmic debt that's coming to them yeah. and we're not conscious enough to recognize that oh you just said that okay i'm gonna hold, I'm gonna you, to hold you to that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. nobody's the karmic that right back out of yeah yep. you know what I mean? yep. and it's like when we are able to do that and recognize when they're actually doing like telling the truth and if people aren't able to recognize it, we got to show people that yo they just did a disclosure episode i want you to check that out because I recognize that as disclosure, so mm -hmm. you can recognize the disclosure. We can all know they're telling us the truth. Right, right. Opposed to just saying, oh, well, it might not be maybe, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's a TV show. Yeah, yeah. And it's it. making it so crazy that yeah. it's like, no, that's no way that's true. Yeah. 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 And they make yeah. it so funny that yeah. people just dismiss it. But yeah. realistically, they, and especially, like, the amount of times they mention Grenada, it, mm -hmm. to Moors, they would yeah, understand you know, yeah, why yeah, yeah. Yeah. they are saying this. Yeah. You know, because anybody else that doesn't know about Daniel, they're just like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have no, and that's what they were even saying with the United States and in, uh, in there. But there's, there's, it goes farther back, and again, that that was 1492, and then Christopher Columbus coming over yeah, to the quote unquote. Yeah. Like this is like for real, for real. Yeah.
Straight flavor. That's also one to add too. Another thing that I saw that they're doing is they're using uh, you know satire channels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're um, actually telling the truth on these satire channels. Yeah. So people are saying, oh, it's a satire channel. So, so it's not real. Yeah, it's not real. It's not real. Because they had something out about the NFL how. It's rigged for Brady to yeah. build the dynasty and stuff, and they had the commissioner, sound like him, like saying, "Yeah, it's like WWE. It's for it's for it's for entertainment. So we have to build these characters, and you know, it's like the hall. Like he basically said, uh, when one wrestler won a uh, hundred and something matches in a row, like that was for entertainment. Yeah, yeah. so it's the same yeah. thing." Yeah. Right, and people, oh yeah, it's it's from satire channel, so uh, oh, yeah. we're not paying attention to yeah. it because yeah. so uh, yeah, I real. can see this is what they're going to probably do now to more pacify the people by telling yeah. the truth, but yeah. put uh, the truth put the truth in in fake yeah, places. In the same places. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and that's why you see Trump in his first stepping out. He said there's fake news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fake news. Yeah. It's fake news. He wasn't lying. And people saying fake news on real things now. It's like, oh, this is just fake news. Because it sounds so like they can't even comprehend that it's, uh, it's like their reality is not what, what you know, you, you try to tell them the truth and it just completely boggles their mind that it's yep. like, that can't be my reality. It's like my whole world can't be alive. Yeah, yeah, like, I can't be yeah, your whole world. That's yeah, a good world. Really, yeah. This is our old world. Yeah, 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 like, it is. From the day we were born, yeah, yeah, yeah. our world started yeah, And our like parents that. and everything. It's, that's uh, right. We're all fed this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I also want to add another thing I saw on Facebook. It's these um, MSTA 1928.org yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know yeah. why. What are the factions? What are the factions? Yeah, I don't know why. Then, you know, like, their grand sheik, I guess his name was Mohab. Mm. They or whatever, something like that. He, so, he was going to give back his Christian name or Christian stuff back to the Europeans and he's going to <coughs> proclaim his Moorish nationality. So they're at the courthouse, they have the video of this courthouse and they're the, uh, one of the more more by the view the narrative, you know, walking them through, he's going to proclaim his nationality. So they're in the courthouse, they're, um, they're in, the, I guess, the, the DA office. And D is at the desk, and they're talking, saying, "I am L B. I'm like, I'm B now, and you know, say it sounds good and everything, you know." And then at the end of it, he comes out. I guess they come out of the DA's office, or so he has that phone. He's like, "Yeah, officially he's happy. Officially yes. <laughs> no, everything's corrected. I gave back your the U S citizen of a war, and he's popping out some paper to show." Yeah. I'm like, "What?" Mm. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was good up to them, like, <laughs> from those like, paper some certificates, like, yeah, from, from them, from them, yeah, from like, them. yeah, yeah. Like, they um, made you a more, man. yeah, they I was excited you till then, man, like, this is the kind of stuff that new more are going to see and think it's the yep, one, think that's, yeah. that's the way, yep, yeah. yep, and again, it goes back to that thing, is your brother selling you right back, mm. you know, but all those people are going to go, and, oh, wow, they got the paper, that means they recognize <laughs> The new oh, dad is okay. bankrupt and solvent, whatever recognized. Oh yeah. Even we're gonna go we're gonna go get yeah, our paper. <laughs> work now, they got work. Make work. Well, you know, fools. Um this one is um ancient brother brother Nabi's book reference again. Um, ancient scripts in South America. by Clyde Winter. By 2000 BC, the Acadians had been subjected by the Shubartu, S-H-U-B-A-R-T-U, -A, a people with Indo-European names. Also at this time, Amorites entered Mesopotamia. Part of this invasion, part of this invasion were the Canaanites who also spoke a Semitic language. The Canaanites established the rule of Hammurabi in 1800 or 1700 BC. The fact that the Sumerians and the Akkadians were Afrikaan or black is best indicated by the artworks of Ur, Tel Asmar, and Eridu. So artworks from Ur, U-R, 
Tell Asmar, T E L L A S M A R, and Iridu, E R I D U. Indo European rulers of Lagash and Larsa tried to imitate Sumerian styles, but many of them were Gutians and therefore not of Kushite origin. The Canaanites invaded Mesopotamia from Arabia. They occupied Palestine and Phoenicia. In the ancient literature, the Canaanites were called Martu or Amorites, A-M-O-R-I-T-E-S. The, the most famous Canaanite ruler of Mesopotamia was Hammurabi. Hammurabi was a great black king. That's a lie, because he's a Canaanite. <coughs> <laughs> right? He's not a black king. If the Canaanites are black people, then they're Canaanites. Right? They're not black people. He is famous for collecting the laws of Babylon and creating a code to give justice to all Babylonians. And, and ancient thing. scripts, ancient oh. scripts in South America. Go ahead, Mark. No, it's just um, <coughs> another thing that you know we're hearing these different titles. Even though it says Amorite, Hamorite, yeah. other language, you might be trying to look for that word, and right. it might be, it might probably, you know, be Hamor. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So the yeah. fact is, regardless of what, no doubt, you hear more in it. So. Right, exactly. Another thing that I noticed too is uh, there's Acadians and there's Acadia here. There's Canaanites, there's Canaan land here. Yep. There's, <laughs> you know, so, you know, there's the um, Semitic languages there, there's Semitic languages here, but the experts don't really tell people. Like the people who are doing their PhDs on this stuff and realize, hey, yeah, this really looks like this is what it is. <laughs> right? They don't go out there and tell people. And I don't think people realize how cutthroat it can be in the academic world when, you know what I mean? You're an archaeologist or you're a linguist or whatever and you realize that there's no way that it could have, it's going the way people think it was. Mm -hmm. Or there's, or, this has to, these people must have been here. They must have come from there and traveled wherever, wherever, right? And when you have those evidences, and you just don't have the opportunity to, to publicize them. So, and then people just wait around for, you know, their academic Jesus, and he never comes because <laughs> he's been shut. You know what I mean? He's been shut up or whatever. Yeah. Instead of just using their own brain and realizing, yeah, you know, I may not be a PhD or whatever, but these things look a lot similar to me, you know what I mean? And then even languages, like, there's just no way certain languages have so much similarity and they're not related just because one is over there and one is over here. It's like um, those people with their PhD, whatever degrees they have, and my sister would say, they have all these degrees and they're dumb as hell. <laughs> because Mark, look what he's eating. This guy is just stepping out of the universe. <laughs> and look at him with this burger, what he's eating. Garbage. Python is eating. Yeah. And he have that degree. Yeah. He have that degree. And look what he's eating. He's dumb as fuck, my sister said. As much as he think he have that degree, he's dumb. Yeah. He's just programmed rubber, like a programmed rubber going. Doesn't know nothing. Like just, just, just a puppet. Yeah. yeah. A puppet being used. Um, um, you, you know, um, more about the uh, the bridging that was talking about the passport and the site. You know, one thing, um kind of just stuck up to me, kind of jump up to me. When he was reading how the requirements are, you got to have two pieces of ID. You know, um, what I hear from that is like, you got to show that you function. Because mm -hmm. um, when you, whatever, you get two IDs, the expectancy of the two IDs from their um, analysis is you're going to use it. 
right. or if you're going to see it. Yeah. So you're operating, you're telling them you're such and such. Now, since we are Moors, we're supposed to be Moors, uh, not only by word, but from some part of the deed. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to go on out there, people are supposed to hear and know what's going on, so we're not supposed to only be more in the corner and then after when you go in the public, you John Doe. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. So it's like, if that's something that many uh, people coming into this science has to be mindful of, you know, um, you're going to be what you're going to be, be that you're going to be, um, but know what you're getting on it before you get on it, you know, don't give it the hype and stuff like that. Um, if anybody has questions, feel free to put those up. concept of like uh, cultures in the language. Mm -hmm. Now, with Moors, our, our inherent language would be Latin. So how did our people come so far away from our, our common language and, and how can we incorporate using Latin or going back to using this language that is of our ancestry opposed to using um, English because with the spell cast of English and again it's like being um, more and going back to our ancestry um, and looking at, say, for example, indigenous, uh, indigenous or Native American natives of the land as well, they'll have a, a dialect that is specific, that is recognized, right. not necessarily recognized, but for their tribes and whatnot, they'll recognize their tongue. Mm -hmm. But for us, and like, um, being so many um, Moors all over, it's like it was like our language was taken from us, yeah. specifically to, you know, in, in dis disassociate ourselves from our mind and our culture just by our language. Mm -hmm. So how can we really, uh, I guess the first question is, is like, how did that happen where like so many of our people were, you know, taken out of their natural tongue to uh, using the English language and how can we go back to promoting Latin opposed to even the Spanish? Um, well, as far as the, the the loss of the language really came from the getting with other people, other people being in the jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know, it's like like we look at um, when we look at English. You know, we know that we're talking about we're talking about a dialect in itself. It's not even a language really, because yeah. when you trace that, it's going to tell you Latin, Old German, High German, whatever. You know what I mean? So, so. It's not really, it, it's just a tongue. It's, it's just a, another, it's not a full you know what I mean? It's not like a language, per se. Um, but it is something that can be used once we deal with, you know, the etymology and things like that. It could be used from its, from its um, um, denotative perspective so that the message is clear when using it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... You know, the, the reason why they say bastard language or whatever like that, because they're looking at it connotative. Mm. They're not looking at doing, you know, because again, too, with, with the whole implementation of the language, you know, um, it never really left. That's why all the law maxims are in Latin. Right. Even though it's English people that are in the court or whatever like that, they're talking Latin terms mm. for the maxims of law. Right? You know what I mean? Um, so... Like, yeah, I, I would say it's more for their generation that they get to teach them some different languages. Yeah. Let them be the ones to go back to it. Yeah. So them having it in their mind again and, you know, talking with each other with it, you know what I mean? Because, you know, one of, one of the, the um, um, things that I see being in the, like being with the, even in the board, is that... 
you know, everybody's moving toward, yeah, they know their language, but they're only talking that at home in the house. Yeah. But they go out here doing business or whatever, they're talking English. They might be broken, they might not be able to be fully, you know what I mean, understood what they're saying, but everybody talks that more than they talk their their language. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when we're looking at the whole thing of um, the colonization and all that, again, you know, Mississauga is an indigenous word, Ontario is an indigenous word, Toronto is an indigenous word, so, you know, <coughs> People say that's English. Yeah. People say it's certain words that we're using. Oh yeah, that's that's some stuff that you know we got from European. Not not really. It might have been adopted by them, and and said in a different tone, tongue, or whatever like that. That gives it a distortion, but it doesn't take away from what it is. You know, Toronto is still Toronto. When they used to call it Toronto before Europeans here, it's just the, the face that's saying it gives this idea that, oh, now it's there, you know what I mean? Um, oh, wow, these guys build the biggest skyscrapers, so they're the founders of buildings. Not, not really, you know what I mean? They know how to build buildings. That doesn't mean they started it, you know? Um, so I know that, that the um, acquiring or getting back to the language, me personally, I would say it's best for them to get it. Because, you know, they could absorb way more than we could absorb. You know what I mean? You take some people today, try to learn some new language. That's you know what I mean. Like, you know, work, whatever else that they got going on in their life. To put the time to it that needs to be put to it to make sure. Because, you know, you can you can have a new language and, and that's bastardized because you didn't really know the language really. And you're telling people, yeah, the chair is driving down the street and stuff like that. <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? So, it's like, um, I mean, it could happen, you know what I mean? It's not something that, that should be um, avoided, you know what I mean? If you have the um, ability to learn a new language or whatever, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Take it up um, just to get that, that broader perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Because the more languages you know, the more people you talk to, the different mindset you're going to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um... Um, I would say it's really for them to really be on, on it like that, yeah. <coughs> like how you're talking. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and us taking the steps to make sure that they're, you know, eight, they got five languages. Yeah. Like, any one, yeah. any language, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when we look at the other nations, that's what they're coming with. I come with just their language where they came from. You know what I mean? You guys say, oh, language? oh yeah, I got eight languages or whatever like that. And then, they, and then under the language is, you know, the different dialects yeah. that they know those too. Mm -hmm. When they, 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 they have the children here, they still teach them the language yeah. before yeah. they learn the English. Yeah, yeah. They still teach them that. And then, and then the, other, the other part of it too is that, you know, remember that the, some of the people People who are second, third generation, quote unquote, in Canada, right? They have they have English tighter than the language. So now they become actually the interpreter, mm -hmm. right? So like we have situations in, in, in school, for example, where, um, you know, something's going on, a letter goes home, that whoever skipped class, they got 500 absences. Ain't nobody reading that home. They don't even speak English, much less reading. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know, the the student or whatever, like yeah, two classes missed or whatever like that, eighty percent on the tests and all that stuff. And they're like, all right, yeah, you're gonna get a car and all that stuff. And I'm like, you did so good in class. You know what I mean? When this guy is the drug dealer of the school and all that stuff, doesn't go to class, never been to a class. You know what I mean? Zeros in every class, 800 absences or whatever like that. But hey, you know, and they'll tell you, well, you know, they don't speak English, home, so I gotta take the letter home. Like I gotta read. It. You know what I mean? Like that's just <laughs> that's what it is. Like, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, if, if it could be, if it could be done for sure. You know what I mean? Get up, get up on that. Um, you know, and again, it's it's the thing of um, you know um, uh, our 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 culture.
culture has been so like divided. Mm -hmm. Our culture has been so um, dispersed that you know get into the to the origin of certain things. Like, you might get you might get close, but to get the origin of it, I don't know. Let's know somebody directly mm -hmm. who still has it in their DNA, and they you know they speak it fluent enough to be able to teach it. It's gonna be hard to get back to you know like when you were saying with regard to you know the Latin over the Spanish and all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Spanish ultimately is Latin, it but is. you know it like, makes us think it's Spanish. Yeah. And, um, to like, there is an old native adage of chief said to another chief, he said, don't deal with those people because they speak with a forked tongue. Mm. But that chief who was speaking to the other chief already knew English. Mm -hmm. so he, like, he, went, he went to England, he learned proper English, yeah. understand, etymologically, and he came back and then he listened to how these readers and dealers were talking to the other chief and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not how it goes. Those, that's, not, that's not right. Yeah. I know that language too. And they're not speaking it properly. No. So they're, 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 they're gaming you. Don't right. do deals with them. Right. right? He speaks with a forked tongue. Mm -hmm. One word meaning two things that right. isn't necessary. Right? So. It goes back again to the denotative, connotative. Right. right. You know, once, once you... Once you know a person is a corporation, you don't let nobody call you a person. Right? <laughs> like, that's just what it is. Yeah. If they continue it, then you know that these people are the forked tongue people that are trying to put you into slavery again or whatever through, you know what I mean, being subject to um, definitions people put on you or whatever. Um, uh, just what, I want to also mark? add yeah. to that, like on, a, on a, like a spiritual level or like on an etheric level, um, I remember... Akeem Bey, he was saying about uh, symbols mm -hmm. being another way of communication, especially to the ancestor, to the ethers, especially like uh, with um, vowels. Like if you take out the vowels from words, you just need the con continent, yeah. the consonants, or whatever. Uh, that those are another way of com communicating or symbolizing to the ethers or to the spiritual world. Where, um, <clears throat> so it's not it's not a, it doesn't be, it's not a word anymore. It, it's a symbol. Now. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, to where yeah. I mean, if you do your affirmations or whatever you're doing, that's a way to communicate, and to manifest, or to you know just whatever that you're doing for your for your interests or for others. Is that like the way we have a a? That's the beginning of our English alphabet. Mm -hmm. And if you turn it upside down, it's bullseye. It means two, it means bullseye. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. The same A, let's turn it upside down. Flip it around. Yeah. And it means bullseye. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 and yeah, it's yeah. funny you said it, because in certain languages, the A actually does mean that that's that's a symbol for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's what the chief was saying yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if anybody tells you, like, they had a dream and somebody came to them and told them X, Y, Z and told them, a story or whatever told him something he's like they're like a person to fraud because yeah, yeah. they'll be talking to you in your dreams or in your visions yeah. or whatever yeah yeah they're yeah. giving you symbols mm. they're not talking True. to you so you gotta word made a sentence yeah, yeah. And, and also i noticed in other languages that in english you have words and words have definition but in other languages what's quote unquote the letters to make up the word, those letters are not letters, those letters are words. Yeah, so it's like you're making a sentence with the words, you know. But you have to understand that word first and the letters, the characters, which are words and so, yeah. The characters are symbols. So, yeah. You know, they're not yeah, the characters are symbols too, right? That's the brothers, yeah. We're building. And it's very, very high science too, because even like construction, I remember, I, like I, that's one thing that helped me with a lot of things. Like a man said, you know, see the letter A, it's exactly, he said the letter A is a very powerful tool. You can, you can hold a lot of weight with just a letter A. If you just, if you don't know what you're doing, start with the letter A and it'll get you some and you'll figure out where you gotta go from there. And that has worked. Um, brother, brother Hassan, brother Hassan Obey, um, has, um, 
Astrology 101 workshop. It's going to be happening at um, House of Reawakening Minds. That's um, in April. So for people who want to do the sign up for the Astrology 101 class or workshop. That'll be online um, too? I'm not sure if it's going to be online. One on one. But, um... Is it one on one or one on one? No, no, it's open. It's, it's open. Yeah, um, one on one. One on one. Yeah, not one on one. Um, reserve your seat now. 443-376-8764. 443-376-8764. Or Hassan Gaziel Bay at gmail.com H-A-S-A-N G-H-A-Z-I-E-L-B-E-Y at gmail.com H-A-S-A-N G-H-A-Z-I-E-L-B-E-Y What's the number again? 443-376-8764 and I'm sure if you need you know one on one you could also build with them and get your readings and stuff like that done as well. Natal chart, whatever else. Can you uh, just read his uh, Gmail just one second again? I'll write that down. Hassan. H A S A N. Hassan, yeah. Um, Ghazi, hold on, G-H-A-Z-I-E-L, um, yeah, H-A-S-A-N, G-H-A-Z-I-E-L-B-E-Y, at Gmail, at Gmail. And if anybody remembers, that was who did the um the Nova Juali when we did the um Nova Juali natal chart. He was the one that pulled the Nova Juali natal chart that we read in one of us. Yeah, yeah. Um all for and all for all the Moors who um sent um emails with regard to our membership inquiry to the temple I'll be sending you out your um I'll be sending you out your membership forms after class or sometime tonight or whatever so just keep open for that. Um, um, Barrett sent this, this message. Uh, salutations Grand Sheik Kujo this is Barrett re reaching out to you. You may remember me in your chat room or on Severe Base chat room on YouTube. I am active and not passive, studying daily with guidance from the likes of Grand Sheik Tashrik Bay, uh, Kudra El, and many others. I've been noticing Morris Turtle Gang has been going on, has been going in on the community of our Morris history and even siding with Taharka Bay. Today, I believe he suggested that U.S. sovereign citizen crack. My intention is not to incite drama. I just want a uh, false dirty more doctrine to stop its causing confusion, especially towards unconscious mores. Sending you their screenshots. So, again, we have to keep in mind that as soon as you hear um, people who call themselves mores, oh, lost that one. <laughs> as soon as you um, call. As soon as you hear Moors talking about Moors are citizens of U.S. or Moors are citizens of Canada, know that they are working with the other side. Know that these are the same Moors who are going to say that active Moors are sovereign citizen studiers. These are the same people who are going to say um, um, Tashri Bay doesn't teach Nova Juali. These are the same people who say you know, no Juali didn't teach sovereignty and all this type of stuff, but we have a national flag, which is a sovereign flag, right? So, um, you know, we, we've, um, we've said before that, remember, these people are using um, 
Inquisition and colonial people as their sources, as far as reference points for you know why they say what they say. They're not gonna go pull a book that a Moore wrote or whatever. They're gonna use some colonial against the Moors European to say, oh yeah, these people aren't doing the things right or these people shouldn't be doing certain things or whatever, right? All these things let you know that they're a fraud. Now, yeah, we know Turtle Gang puts out DVDs and they put out documentaries and all that stuff. I mean, you know, they ain't whatever. But if you're really on some nationality birthrights, you ain't talking about no Turtle Gang is your nation or whatever, right? Because we already know that this is Morocco. Forget that Turtle Island BS, right? This is Morocco over here. They ain't no way that, you know, you're, you're going to be claiming the land is something relative to turtles or whatever because you don't call yourself turtle or whatever. So the Aboriginal Turtle Gang Island, Turtle, turtle, turtle Gang is a... Uh, yeah, Turtle Gang is some, some, some Moors that do documentaries and stuff. And they call themselves Moors? I would suppose so because, you know, they put out things relative to Moors. I would, I would think they're Moors. <laughs> Because what yeah. they put out is Moorish right. stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, still but if they're not proclaimed Moors, then I could see why they would say Turtle Gangs, yeah. not Moorish Empire films or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? Like why would why even go that route? If if you're not trying to tie to Moors. You know what I mean? Because you would just say call it something Moorish. Off the black, but you know, they know, um, obviously they're in media and stuff like that. They know the influence of saying certain things and not saying certain things. You say the M word, you're probably not going to get too much attention from the Negroes and whoever else that might want to learn. Because everybody's scared of the M word, right? Everybody's scared. So, yeah, so, and, and again too, with um, um, individuals who bump into these people on social media or whatever, always use them as a beating stick to teach other people. You know what I mean? Don't be don't be afraid to tell them to go go somewhere. But you know, don't just don't just be um you know telling them FOH or whatever. Put some info with the FOH so that the FOH doesn't be the focal point. You know what I mean? Because that's what people are going to look at. Oh, look, see these guys going against each other and whatever like that. When we're not we're not against dirty morals. We know that they're dirty. We're just presenting the truth. You know what I mean? We're just presenting what these people are not going to present or don't want to present. Some of his um, um, Django memes, the Django, the Django meme more. Mm -hmm. got some good. <laughs> got some good. <laughs> so we put those out. Django L Bay, yo, don't get it twisted, right? Um, Rosewood, Seven Old Moors, you know what I mean? Don't don't think that the story wasn't being told. You know, like we're saying with um. Um, X Files, or whatever like that, and people looking at that like, forget that, that ain't real, and all that. Oh yeah, you you'll see, you'll see how real it is. You know, they're making the point to let people know how real it is. Um, oh, but you know, also just to uh, um, some words too, but man, it's just that. Once we see this information, what are we going to do to defend it? What are we going to do to keep this information? Because it's one thing to see it and know, and then get amnesia and forget about it. Yeah. We go back to Monday and it's like back to the plantation again, and now, you know, whatever thoughts that was affecting you or stressing you on, now you have it to come back and stress you on again. But mm -hmm. once you realize that, okay, this here is Morocco, this is not Canada. Toward these businesses. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, 
then you're going to start seeing the value of your own self and now realizing that the value of your own self is not for yourself it's not of your own to do for your own your own demise it's for you to be building with people that are of the same and have the same interests you know, you know. Um, Brother Michael McDuffie Peace, you mentioned something on a previous video where you mentioned that Mac, M-A-C, and M-C surnames are already Moorish appellations. Can you direct me where I could confirm and explore this because I'm choosing my appellation and planning to keep McDuffie. Now, the, um, conceptually, we have to recognize that once you do hyphen on a European name, that's a, that's a um, conflict of interest, if you will. Because you're saying free national name, but you're using a name that's not free. Whether Europeans used it or we used it, it's not really a free name, right? Um, for, for the reference point of Mac and Mac being tied to the Moors, you go to David McRitchie, Ancient and Modern Britons. There's, um, I think there's a two volume now, where the two volumes are in one book. Um, Ancient and Modern Britons, David McRitchie. And the concept again is that the MC lets you know that Moors were in Europe. So don't throw away Europe like that, you know, you know that's caveman stuff and not ours. Just, just get rid of, you know, anything having to do with Europe, throw it away because it has nothing to do with Mars. Or now it has everything to do with Mars. Right? You know? And, and that Europeans know that it has everything to do with Mars. Which is why they make the claim that, you know, Europe's a continent and, you know, there's these European people and all that stuff. But when you start breaking it down, you realize that the Germans, Mars founded there. And then the British were really brutish which is really more. And the English, really more English, they're really Gaelic, and you can't really, you know, say that a language is a people, so who really, who really were these people, all right? Um, Irish, you know, they call them nigger, so you already know who, who those guys are, all right? Um, um, Italians. Italians, they already know, just go watch True Romance again, go to the movies, be like, nah, that's just a movie, we're not hearing none of that, and stuff like that, when they let them know. Scottish, same thing, going back to the Moors, right, which is the whole thing with the Mac and the MCs and all that. Um, um, French and Dutch, Netherlands, all that stuff, you go there, you realize more stuff everywhere, Moorish bridges, Moorish more holding a bridge up, more on top of a church, more whatever, anywhere you go, right? So it's not, it's not the name that you're keeping, it's the concept that the name came from you. It's the concept, but you want to have a free name. You, want, you don't want to be tied to anything having to do with, um, you don't want to be tied with things not having to do with your ancient foremothers and forefathers. Right, because even if we go back and we check all this, um, the the whole concept of um, the names, if the people were dark skinned, they just call them Moors. Forget their names. Right? They said Othello the Moor, Saint Benedict the Moor, whoever the Moor, everybody the Moor. So clearly, it's not about their name. It's not about what they were called. It's not about what religion they had. It was about these people have a specific phenotype, and then. That's what they are, right? And it doesn't mean black. It doesn't mean, you know, um, dark-skinned people and all that. Uh, every, you know, land means more. Darker boat means more. Like, everything goes back to these um, seafaring, trading, whatever people that touch everywhere and had influence on everybody. Regardless of how they feel about it today or whatever like that, you know, like again, we're like we say with true romance, yeah, I got mad, killed guy, cause yo, what do you mean my grandma slept with a nigger and stuff like that? Like, you can't talk like that. Like, what do you mean? 
I know that already. Like, why are you stressing the point? <laughs> stressing the point. What are you trying to do? Get me mad or whatever? But you know, he already knew that they were going to kill him, which is why he, you know, gave him the jabs. Right? Just so you know. Um, okay, we'll close out with this. Um, Brother Shakim sent this. It's called um, Retired Judge Spills the Beans. Retired Judge Spills the Beans. Just a article. Again, you're dealing with, um, you know, so many. This is from um, two, 2013. Um, Main Republic. Main Republic website is probably something that they got on their site that you could download. Main. Um, M A I N E. Main Republic website. And again, these are some Europeans realize that, yo, we're bringing the Republic back. Forget that democracy BS. So we're, we're saying main republic. And anything we do is going to be, you know, with regard to bring back the Constitution and enforcing rights, enforcing laws. We're not part of the citizenry or whatever. So they got their, um, their boy, Judge Dale, to just, you know, obviously he's retired and all that stuff. So what he got to lose by telling some truth now? All right? So he's he, to lose. He, he's, um... He's promoting, he's, he's affiliated with Main Republic, uh, Dale? Well, I mean, in some way, because he, you know, they got, you know, a six-page article or whatever from him, you know what I mean, about, about this fraudulent stuff or whatever. Um, retired judge spills beans. Stuff you're not supposed to know. I didn't plan on writing a part five, but... Given the global movement in play to collapse the fiat financial dominance historically created and controlled by the Vatican, European royals and elite plus the retaliatory efforts by the United States Corporation to recruit their control of America, I felt a necessary, I felt a need to point out the flaws in their corporate process. You probably identify with this corporate process as a legal process. But it really isn't about what is legal or lawful because all process is about the enforcement of contracts or the imposition and enforcement of corporate regulations called statutes. The best advice you will ever receive is avoid their courts whenever possible. Sound familiar? Think they're not studying from certain people? There is no justice to be found in those courts unless you are a member of the Vatican, the royal or elite, or have purchased diplomatic immunity. For all those Moors out there who said, yeah, we got the diplomatic plates, now we can be free. No, dip, dip, diplomacy is purchased. Which means diplomacy is a corporate act. Which is why Moors say we're elodio. Because as soon as you start getting into those red plates and the orange plates and those guys give plates so da, da, da. now you're you're back right back under the jurisdiction again because you know they can't make you a citizen how could they make you a diplomat <laughs> right the only constitutional court in America is the International Court of Trades which was created because no foreign nation government would trade with the corporate United States until they provided a way for these foreign nations to enforce their trade agreements with America. I right, never heard that one. That the actual only constitutional court is the International Court of Trades. No, historically, the World Court was created to provide nations with a venue to enforce their trade agreements, but the corporate United States refused the court's invitation to participate because they were denied control over the court. All of the other American courts are pseudo-courts or fictions and simply are corporate administrative offices. Sound familiar? Yeah. Designed to resemble courts and all of the judges are simply executive administrators designed to resemble judges. The purpose of these pseudo-courts is only to settle contract disputes and since George Washington's government was a military structure, 
If either party refused to participate, these courts cannot become involved and the dispute is dead in the water. Oh yeah, and then, where's your book with the thing? <laughs> Since we're bringing up George Washington, and then we'll close up. You said Bush? Huh? No, George Washington. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. This is a book called um, His Majesty's Yankees by T.H. Radoff, R-A-D-D-A-L-L. Um, uh, copyright in 1942. So on uh, page 157, um, this is this book is set around the time of the American Revolution. Um, you have um, the Americans and uh, the British trying to recruit different tribes to help them in the war, right? So. It says, Colonel Joe stood up and talked to them in fluent Micmac for half an hour, but he was no orator, and the talk was dull. The burden of it ran that the great white father over the big water was in trouble with some of his Yankee children, especially the one called Wachita, mm. in brackets, Washington. And he, Gorham, hoped with all his heart that his brothers, the Micmacs, would take part of the king. He reminded them of his majesty's gifts of guns, powder, blankets, and food made yearly ever since the province was won from the French and lately much increased. And it goes on and on and um, but it does get it does talk about, you know, George Washington later it talks about um, uh, Benjamin uh, Franklin or different different people who were around at the time. So it's it is it is talking about Washington but um, where it says um, especially the one called Wachita, W A C H I T A and then brackets, Washington. Washington's in brackets. So, that's a reference for anybody who... Why do you guys, you know, say Washita? <laughs> it's not just us. Yeah, right? It's definitely not just us. And then, I was meditating on it like... There's no other Euros that I've ever met with the name Washington. Yep. Never heard of. But I know Denzel and you know <laughs> Kerry Washington yep. and you know all the Washingtons and then, Washington. And then in um the Empress's book. Uh, the ancient ones, Return of the Ancient Ones, right? There's all dedication in honor of the most high God. This book is dedicated to my only son, Mr. Fredericks Joe Washington, grandchildren. Um and Washington, 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 daughter-in-law, Washington, Butler, Robertson, Washington, Gray the second, Washington, Washington, Washington. Right? These are all Washita people. Yeah. Um, right. I'm just trying which, to... which which goes back to what, what the brother was saying with the the European name. Right? They didn't claim Washington as their name. They claim Washita because Washita is what created Washington, right? So it's not about claiming McDuffie, it's about what was before McDuffie or where did McDuffie come from? What's the origin of McDuffie, right? And then when you find that out, then you, then you get back to what the origin is and then you claim that instead of claiming the MC on Duffy and then thinking that oh yeah I'm tied to the Moors but there's a there's a pre-name that you should be tying to just like they said we're talking about Washita we just put in brackets here Washington just so you know that this is where the origin is so anytime you hear somebody say Washington you already know oh yeah there's they're supposed to be Washita whether they claim that or not you know you're not gonna know until they state their claim but if they don't state their claim, know that these people are actually Washita. Right? Not not Washington. It reminds me of uh I remember I was checking out Jamal Jamal Flicks. I know my Jamal Flicks on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. And he made mention that Big brother, he, Islam to brother Jamal. Yes, indeed, Islam. And he made mention that, you know, it's either Islam or you gotta prove that he was 
not up on one. Right. Right. I mean, hearing what I'm hearing is like, okay, and they ain't supposed to derive your purpose that you're destined to be. So, at the end of the day, if you know you're more, then you just gotta tune in your own self and see that for yourself. For that, that's, that, that's what it is. There's no, there's no other way for it to go. Either you're tied to being a serf or enslaved, or you're tied to mourners. Right, whether it's Moors or anybody else. Because when, when, you know, we, um, when we engage um, other Asiatics that are here, they verify that they know that over here is Morocco. When we start talking to them, right? They admit that over here is Morocco. Okay, so if they know that over here is Morocco, then clearly they know that they have to tie themselves to Moorish history over here. Right? Which is why they deal with us how they deal with us when they engage us. Because they already know that we're the landlord. And we're under occupation. In our own land. Right? Um, and, then, and then when we look at um, um, Christopher Fleming and Latif Bay and these other Europeans, they're saying, we recognize that there is a Moorish Empire. And we would side with that before we side with the U.S. Corporation because we know that we can't be, you know, if there's a treaty between them and Morocco and they know that the people who are in charge of the quote-unquote government today aren't the people from 1700s, that that stuff's been infiltrated, then you're going back to the origin. Why would you stay with the corrupt people? Right? Which is where... You know those people are going. Even even the sovereign citizen people, when they're talking about bringing back republics or whatever like that, they're really enforcing treaty. They're trying to bring the Negroes back into their mind that they're the Moors. Because yeah. the only way that there can be republics, which is for Europeans, is is because there's a treaty. You know, more as he's saying that, I remember I was looking at his last stuff and I was... Um checking out this this European out in Australia online to go by the name of Franco Collins. He's the only European that I know that deal with like this free man on the land sovereignty stuff mm. that actually brought out information about who the Moors were and you know the Moors brought this and the Moors civilized Europe. He's the only European man I know that I brought out. And he basically mentioned that Canada and Australia are like one in the same and so yeah. forth. Yeah, when you said that, you know, indeed, these, these, these Europeans, they're bringing out information, and they have to yield, you know, and not only Europeans, but every nation, I mean, the sun has to yield unto the divine truth, you know, if you don't, then fight against the tsunami and the earthquake and right, whatever else, you know, <laughs> you're taking up with that. Exactly. exactly. I also want to add, too, that you said about the treaty, um, I know, when was the last one signed? In the 80s? No, I think it was like 9... The, 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 well, I, I know that the, there was one supposed to be signed in 1920-something, and then that, that heir died or got assassinated or something. So I think from that, from that time, it hasn't really been signings. It's just been, you know, posing like, you know, something, something's there because they're not really the people who were what did from Obama before. Sign? What did Obama sign? Rights of Indigenous people. Oh, rights of Indigenous people. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. rights of Indigenous people. Because right. what I'm thinking is that, um, I mean, well, I, I, I was thinking more like the treaty's coming up to be signed maybe in the next, whatever year. Yeah, it's supposed to be every 50, yeah, every 50, 50 years. years. Yeah. So if we could prevent this, prevent that from being signed, I don't know. Oh, that possible, but yeah. I mean, the yeah, well, that's that's why they assassinated the one, the one heir that was supposed to be the one to sign. I can't remember the name, but it was somewhere around the 1920s, right? When when one of the heirs of the Sultan, who was part of the whole treaty, whatever, got killed. Like he was the one that was supposed to be next to sign for however long 
the power goes, he'll be the one signing until he's off and then whoever else comes in. But, you know, like you saying, once you get the guy out the way, then they can install anybody to sign. You know what I mean? And then, are they really going to be able to be held to the obligation if they're the ones that aren't the ones supposed to be signing? You know, which again goes back to Drew Ali and why he said, you know, more your body politic, you are a nation. So you better start be yourself because everybody around you sold you out. You know what I mean? It's either we it's either we look within and deal with our stuff or we're gonna have we're gonna have issues dealing with these people out here. Because you know, majority of them want need the world and dumb down for them to have what they have. You know. Like they have to dumb down the world to be in the power position that they're in to sit to make claims like well, that doesn't we could we could um um you know rid of habeas corpus we could deny that and we can tell you now we, oh you can send us something you say um you know Osiris X relation no we're not for X relation we're for AKA on the stuff you know what I mean right because it's it's a it's a it's a sense of having power. But they don't really have it. But the reason they don't have it is because, you know, there are people here who have the power, but they don't want to wield it. They always want somebody else to do it. They always want, you know, the guy after the lecture and crowd around him, opposed to them going out on on what the lecture, what the lecture presented, and go out and do what it is that was was presented. You know what I mean? So. It's um, it's just what it's just what we, we got to deal with. You know what I mean? um, even things like you know looking at because they're they're talking in the chat about the, there's a more and they're talking about um, um, you know you need to tell me you know how to whatever process you know what I mean you need to tell me don't tell me you go research or whatever like that like if you know you should just tell me well. You know, if I tell you, it's 500 an hour. <laughs> like, what, like what, what do you mean? Just, what do you mean just tell you? You're not going to no university out here telling, yeah, just tell me how to get my degree or whatever. Yeah, 30 grand a year. <laughs> That's how you get it. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not coming in here and we're just going to give you the paper just because we know we, we, we are, you know, we got the school. We could just give people diplomas. How come? Because the servant is worthy of his hire. So if you're gonna be on, on in the, the YouTube chat and all that stuff and demanding people tell you stuff, make sure you put up your 500 hour or whatever. You get a consultation with whoever it is that has the info and then you get the info. And then, and then when you go do the consultation, and then they give you whatever, and then you try and it doesn't work. Now you can talk BS, right? Because you paid your part. You know, serving is worthy of a side. Or, like the Morris said, get off the goddamn chat thing and go study. <laughs> we got all the movies in the chat. Beat these people up just because. If there's no questions, we'll close up. If anybody has any, any comments, testimonials? Um, oh, I'm Tess. You want to put out the... Yeah. So, um, I'm going to send out another email, but there's an email that was sent out uh, for a conference call Wednesday. That's going to be an informational call. So, any questions or concerns that anybody has, uh, specifically concerning the town hall, um, we'll take up. But also, we're just going to, we're setting the date and the space for the town hall. We pretty much have it nailed down, yeah. so um, during the conference call, we'll just go over that right. um, and go over how the town hall is going to go and what, you know, what the purpose of the town hall is and what we're going to discuss. So this Wednesday, um, so the 31st, 31st, right? Only, Wednesday. so the, 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 uh, the, block, the talk show, right? whatever that's, conference. Talk, yeah, the conference, that, um, you can only get on that if you apply back to the email. No, the, in, the information. No, the information for the call is on the email. Yeah. Oh, it's just a, it's just a number. So okay. it's just. Um, I'm sure you want to come now. I don't think I have. Uh, um, uh, just, yeah, if you pull it up. He sent to me, but I ain't yeah, reached that email on a regular daily basis. 
probably uh if no, you're not I'll, just on the list. I'll just check the email. I'll yeah, if you're also if you're not on the list, yeah, just sure. let me know after class and I'll I don't, I don't take your email and, and I'll take your number and yeah, I'll, 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 you can just check this after and write down the info. Yeah. Because the, the other the other thing too is that it's um the um the town hall is limited to us, so we don't have to put the number out at these weirdos mm -hmm. coming on our stuff, talking or talking to BS on our stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So whoever's on the email list will get it. If you're not on the email list, um, brother Tez, myself, whoever, you know what I mean? We can get you the information. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. For the um. We get the information for the for the conference call. Um, also, too, um, we have our our um, correcting Moorish History Month or correcting Black History Month going on on the um, 10th and 17th, and that's going to be at um, Flemington Park Community Center, Don Trimble Community Center, 3:30 um, or 12:30 to 3:30, 29 Saint Dennis. Um, on the 7th, or on the 10th, we have um, Dr. Kawa, he's going to be on, on Skype with us answering questions. And again, the, the theme is for anybody who ever said they got some questions about Moors or they got some debate or whatever like that, um, here's the opportunity to come and ask Moors. So this is the question the Moors challenge to all the so-called Negro Black conscious, whoever, feel free to... Um, come to the event because it's free, no charge, or doors open for everybody. Um, bring your questions. Again, 29 St. Dennis, February 10th and 17th, 12.30 to 3.30. The 10th, we have Dr. Kaba. The 17th, we're working on, on who we're going to be streaming with for um, the 17th. We have two people that we're talking to and we're going to see what, what happens with that. We'll put the name out once we confirm. And also, the um, 24th, we're going to be doing our Ottawa, our Ottawa trip, which um, every, the past um, three, past three years, um, including this, including this year, we've been going to Ottawa to do um, lectures with the Moors out there. So they organize their space and all that stuff, and we'll go out there for, we we'll probably do a two days. Friday, we we'll leave Friday night, go up there Saturday, and uh, we'll come back on Sunday, or we we'll leave Saturday night. Um, we have um, um, two people out there with spaces that are open. I think they're up, I think it's about seven, seven spots right now. And we're working on somebody else out there who has some bed and breakfast spots for, I think it was 70, yeah. 70 bucks a night or something like that. Yeah. So um, if anybody's interested, you can, um, if you're interested in the Ottawa, in the Ottawa trip, you could um, email Mother Mocha and her email address. You have Mocha's email address? Anyways, um, email brother Amari. Yo, Amari, oh, you got it? Yeah, J, J. Alright, um, so Mama Mocha, Mama Mocha's email for the Ottawa people, um, J-A-J-Y-K-A-444. J-A-J-Y-K-A-444 at gmail.com. J A J Y K A four 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 at gmail.com. Thanks, bro. And um, yeah, so that's on the twenty fourth of the month, right? Um, any more announcements? I think 
That's it. So 10th, 17th, um, Town Hall is going to be somewhere around there in February. And conference call Wednesday. Oh, yeah, time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Conference call 7 p.m. Um, on Wednesday, the 31st. So check the email, get the phone number so that we can get our our stuff together and, um, you know, go from there. All right, we'll close out. Is on to the Moors. And all the Moors in the chat said Islam to the Canaan land Moors. Islam. Uh, all the Moors in the Canaan land send theirs out to the Moors in the chat. So we'll just close out. Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. Through His Holy Prophet. Through His Holy Prophet. Noble Juali. Noble Juali. Islam. Islam. You're doing the prayer next time, bro. Doing the prayer next time. Great job. <laughs> oh, Gary, this dude does not mean me no harm. I mean no harm, but this dude really, really is some crap, man. I went and heard the song, the one video, the one. I ain't even gonna get us in no airplane, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boy. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. To the Hawker. Pig ten, bay. <laughs> 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 you suck. You suck, Tarka. <laughs>
need what you hear Proclaim nationality, have no fear Hear what they want to, share where they taunt you In a dead state of mind is where they want you Dirty moors dragging new moors and beef they can't handle Won't waste bullets or beat y'all with sword handles Or walk the left hand path and use black candles Moorish Bobby Hemet, Carl Orisha, spitting Jack Daniels Use the Morris star on y'all, upside down Call myself Morisco to cross check you clowns Hating, cause sister Seela won't sex you clowns Keep it hookless but jab full and vex you clowns Don't ask what's up, catch many uppercuts Pope puts his ring in dirty maws face, they pucker up Watch out for dirty maws down with beast systems Calling them ex some wilderness and praising East wisdom Plus taking checks like welfare negroes Dirty maws always want to be known as black heroes More like heroin, not the feminine hero But the hard drug made to destroy our people Watch what I say, heed what you hear Proclaim nationality, have no fear Hear what they want to, share when they taunt you In a dead state of mind is where they want you Watch what I say, heed what you hear Proclaim nationality, have no fear Hear what they want to, share when they taunt you In a dead state of mind is where they want you